macroeconomic data down big time. Fundamentals, company earnings, first quarter, negative earnings, projected negative earnings, second quarter as well. So, new bull market or just a big bubble? Lots to discuss. Sit back. Let's go. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First time here, I am a practicing financial advisor. We have a registered investment advisory firm, which means we act as a fiduciary. We also do videos like this today, market updates, podcasts, educational videos, etc. So if you like what you hear, please do consider subscribing. So in the opening, we talked about, right, fundamentals, macro, bull market, so many people excited. But are we getting just a little bit ahead of ourselves? Are you aware of what's happening behind the scenes? How about the options market and how that's driving price right now until it doesn't? So we've got a lot to talk about today. We're going to go through the charts, the technicals. We're going to go through that macroeconomic data, sector spotlight where we are right now, and a game plan going forward. So let's go to the big board. For those first timers, welcome. But our process starts with the macro side of things. We are a global macro go anywhere investment firm. Okay, and we look at market cycles. This comes from all the data that comes to us from our research firm. And from that, we look at growth, inflation, and policy. And that will help us determine which cycle we're in. We have been in cycle four since January of 2022. Growth slowing, inflation, decelerating, disinflation. Saw that yesterday with the CPI report which should not be a surprise to anybody. Of course, those who get all excited about it. All right, so from this, again, we'll build our portfolios. Now, year to date, a lot of people have not been paying attention to this at all, and we're gonna talk about that and why, okay? So, first up, on the macro side of things, I could show you a whole bunch of charts. All right, gonna keep it simple with some bullets here. All of the items that are, have gone negative continue to be negative, and this is just some of them, okay? Leading indicators, talk about that in a second. Red Book, same, uh, same store retail sales. Went negative just yesterday, got that report. CapEx, that's the monies that companies invest for future growth. Negative, down. Capital orders, manufacturing ISM, right? Big piece of our economy, right? Negative, eight months in a row, all data points around manufacturing are, no, are, are all negative for the first time since 2008. Okay, industrial production going down, employment hours worked. Now, employment always the laggard big time so far, but we're definitively seeing uh, cracks, not just from hours worked, okay, new hires, more unemployment. They're readjusting things, so more to follow on that. But as we look forward, what has been keeping it up? Because the macroeconomic data has been bad. The fundamentals, we talked about that in the opening, not good, okay? So there's been a couple things. Biggest thing is liquidity, okay? Little typo here, BTFP. So back in March, when we had the bank crisis. The Fed came in, call it what you want, it was a bailout. They bailed out these bank firms and they created a lending facility, which is being used to the tune of over $100 billion a day. Okay, so that has helped liquidity in the market, at least the thought of liquidity in the market. The second thing is the Treasury. When we went through the debt ceiling deal, okay, they were spending down their TGA, Treasury General Account. All right, money had to come from somewhere. That created liquidity at one point. They were down to $56 billion in basically the government's bank account, okay? And then, of course, you've had some of these government spending programs, all of which has helped 
kind of create this idea of liquidity. So you've got the Fed raising rates, quantitative tightening, but over here, the other side, they're still pumping out money, okay? So that's one of the things. So the other big piece is AI. AI, everyone's talking about artificial intelligence. Funny cartoon in the background here from our friends at Hedgeye, all right? And it shows you black AI mentioned in stories, right? Publications, etc. The blue line are CEOs, transcripts, CFOs talking about AI. Everybody's talking about AI. Okay, exciting, different, new. Wait, no, it's not new, right? It has been around for a while, but it's really not ready for prime time. There's still a long way to go. Have a client in a space, sent me some articles. I did some additional research. Most people will tell you you're gonna see 12 to 15 quarters out before you really start making money, okay? But of course, we had the big guys here at NVIDIA who were going crazy with this, right? The CEO came out who's probably a better salesman than Elon Musk, missed earnings by 13%, but said, we're gonna grow by 65% in the next quarter. Wait, what? Okay, so again, from our friends at Hedgeye, showing a chart here. The, the orange here is this prediction of NVIDIA's sales growth, okay? But the problem is the black line, okay, excuse me, uh, the, the black line, yeah, is Taiwan trade exports. Why is that important? Because that's where the chips are made. That's going negative, okay? The orange is the projection. The blue is sales year over year. There is a huge disconnect here. Not sure what's going to happen. Had some major, I'm talking a half a billion dollars in sales from insiders at NVIDIA in the last month. I mean, talk about bubbles. I mean, we'll see if they can deliver, great, but I think it's gonna be surprising, okay? The other big thing is, right, you've heard this, the top seven, right, the big companies driving everything. It really has just been a handful of companies. It's gotten so big, in fact, that when you look at the NASDAQ 100, okay, the top five names, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, represent 48%. It's ridiculous, right? So the, for the first time in history, all right, they're going to do a rebalance going down to 38, 38%, okay? So they're going to be selling all those big names. It's going to be very interesting, July 24th, see how that shakes out within the overall market, something to pay attention to. So what else has been happening out there? Options, crazy, okay? I'm showing you here these options, but these are ODTE, same day options, unbelievable. The volume activity has been just immediately, I mean, just soaring, okay? You go to the third week in April when we jumped up, four trillion in nominal options, which is value, right? Unbelievable, okay? This is showing you the surge of same-day options. This is really scary. A lot of people don't even understand this or even know it's happening, okay? They're coming in and they're moving the markets with these same-day options. Most importantly, okay, last week on a call with the CEO of Simplify, Mike Green, brilliant guy in the option space, we're now seeing more option trading in a day than actual stocks and ETFs. Think about that. More options trading than anything. Were you aware of that? I wasn't, okay? So let's look at a couple things real quick. So this comes from Tier 1 Alpha. Tier 1 Alpha is a company also headed by Mike Green, which nice is our research firm, just bought part of this firm. Because again, we got to be aware of this. This shows you, this is from yesterday, the 12th, the options activity, the blue line is the ODTEs. Look at it. Unbelievable. Everyone knew the CPI was going to come in softer than expected, right? We all knew that, right? Based on last year's comps, it was going to come in lower. Massive amounts. The problem is nobody's on the other side of this on the put side, right? Protection. So eventually, eventually something's going to happen. Great article by Larry McDonald. I'll put it down here. Uh, below about what's going on with these ODTEs, the ETF flows, 
something is going to happen to change all this. So it's pushing it higher. What happens if that goes the other way? Stay tuned, okay? So next up, with the market, with these big companies, with these ODTEs, right? The orange line is the S&P. The blue line's stocks outperforming the index, right? So it tells you it's a very, very thin market. Okay, last but not least, also important is the fact that, right, the orange line is the surge in ODTEs. The blue line is the collapse of 30-day options. Why is that important? The VIX, the volatility index, is based on 30 days, 30-day options. That's why the VIX has not moved and is so low, okay? And it's really become obsolete. I mean, it's just not working. And again, until it does, remember, risk happens slowly and then all at once. And that's what we think is coming. Let's go to the big charts. Starting with the charts here, what do we see? First up, not going to show a lot in this area on the S&P, but you know, the obvious is this is the line we've been tracking. We finally went up it last month, okay? Obviously positive, okay? Had a crossover down here in momentum, but we're not seeing the volume and the market breadth that we would look for in what I'll call a traditional bull market, okay? The next one I'm going to show is, look, Bull market, bear market, uptrends or downtrends is what I look at, okay? So obviously this has been a downtrend for some time and we've had a lot of volatility, not uncommon in a bear market. And I'm not saying we're in a bear market right now, okay? And we're teetering on even being on an uptrend or downtrend because you really need to break and get to, to the old high, okay? Bottom line is we broke above what I thought was key resistance, 42 then 4,300, okay? But at that point, when you see what's going on, what I just talked about with NVIDIA, the big names, these options, and low volume, not a lot of conviction. Now, I do think there's other places where you can make these type of returns without the risk here. And I don't know if I said this in the opening, but that's why I think this is really a big bubble, okay? When you look at some of the macro stuff we're going to get into, I don't see how we sustain this with what's coming Let's go to Sector Spotlight. Sector Spotlight, just going to go through a few items, reminding you a global go-anywhere process. But we'll start in the U.S. with the Treasury market. Been showing us for a while. Has been the worst place to be over the last two years. You know, recently, and you can see, right, we basically have been in this box for quite some time. Uh, we broke back up here to the 4% range, which is not good. Uh, we have a very, very small holding in U.S. duration treasuries, okay? But after the news, okay, of CPI, we went down a little bit, okay? That's what's been holding up the bond market is inflation. So I think we see a couple things here. One, will this downturn hold? Okay, I'm looking for that, not just because of inflation, but I think as we start seeing earnings, if it continues lower, then we'll really start adding to bonds. We think that bond yields go down over time. But again, it's been sideways, which is why it's such a small holding. So next up, let me get rid of that piece right there. Next up uh, is gold. So precious metals. Big part of our theme, started buying gold last November, has come down a little bit as you can see, but yesterday and then again today, we're seeing some move higher, like gold, like gold miners. Same thing here with silver. Had a huge move yesterday and a pretty darn big move today as well. So, you know, both of these, obviously with big moves like this, be careful, make sure you find good entries. We've got a good size position in gold, good size position in silver right now. So I'm happy with those position size. But when things take off like that, you got to be careful. So go anywhere process, right? Talked about our cycles. Well, cycle one, Japan is in cycle one. 
They were late coming out of COVID, so they're seeing their growth now. This is our top allocation. So rather than chase the, the Qs, the tech names, right, I'd rather go where we're seeing true growth. Japan top holding across growth, value, et cetera, small, et cetera, small cap. So you can see the move, slow, grinding higher, nice move again today. So another one, got to be careful, find your entry points. We've been in it for a little bit. And I'll show one more, which is India. They're in the same scenario. They're in growth mode right now, coming late out of COVID as well. So we like India. That's our second strongest signal. Been waiting to add to this one because it has gone up since we bought it. And we could talk about South Korea, Brazil, as a couple other holdings of, as well that have, in fact, worked well for us. Next up, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> What keeps me up at night? Normally not much. Recently, uh, more than expected because of what's happening in the markets. And I'm seeing all this global stuff and the markets are going crazy. But with that being said, let's talk about some facts here because that's what macro is about. Data, facts, okay? First up, right, this clock is ticking on the student debt issue, okay? Come October, we're going to start, start paying back. We're anticipating 10 to $15 billion a month of consumption coming out of the market. Great ch uh, chart here from Hedgeye. Roughly two-thirds of real PCE, PCE growth over the past year has been attributable to those who are not paying student loans. This will be an issue. And when we look at our GDP forecast, we're not even factoring this in yet. Okay, So really continue to watch that as we go forward. I've talked about this, market breath. When you go back to the 2021 bull market, you had some big moves. This is uh, new highs minus new lows, which is the histogram. The blue line is the NYSE, the full market, right? And you see great strength over here. Now, come to this year, come to last year, right? We're having these counter trend moves, all right? But what's happening? Not much, right? I mean, first off, look at the NYSE. It's going down versus the S&P, because that's showing the whole market. It shows you what I'm talking about without the breath. I mean, yesterday, 33 new highs minus new lows. Not strong at all. Next up, talked about the Treasury uh, and the debt limit in the last month and change since the debt ceiling issue was taken care of, quote unquote. We've added $1 trillion in debt. Couple articles this morning, Larry Summers, Ray Dalio, what a problem this is. We are now over $32 trillion, quickly on our way to $33 million. More importantly, how about daily? Okay, interest expense alone on this is $1.3 billion a day. That is a problem. Nobody is addressing it, and that's what those articles talk about. I'll try and put them down there below. All right. Finishing things up, I talked about leading indicators. This is showing you red, green, yellow, just like a stoplight, right? Red, recession, caution, expansion, and you can go across housing permits, and I can list them all. I'll zoom in. Can you, you can see them and pause, right? So this is going back to September, December, and we're seeing things slowly get worse across the board. Now, here we are in March, right? What's up? Jobless, we've talked about that, and shipping, okay? Now, Look at where we are today. All reds, okay, we've got two yellows. Jobless has gone yellow. As I said, we are seeing cracks there as well as shipping. So numbers, again, don't lie. Sometimes the markets do because the market, right, is not what you see in the macro side. The question is, will they come together? Will they finally see what's going on? And I believe, like I said, risk happens slowly, and then all at once, let's wrap this up with game plan. Game plan, simple. Been talking about it. I think the market is way, way, way overbought with nothing behind it, okay? What's the catalyst to move it to the downside? Could be earnings. Could be finally with all the uh, Fed rate hikes. Heard a story this morning. Relatively small company, okay, where they went for the line of credit. Interest rates went from 6 to 12 and it hits her bottom line on $2 million. That's what's coming with small businesses. Bankruptcies are soaring right now. 
highest number since 2008. So a lot of stuff going on. Eventually, the market's going to look at this and believe it. So on that pullback, will it be a buying opportunity or more? We'll keep you up to date and keep an eye on that one. We've talked about some of our longs. Again, you don't have to chase. Great time to take profits in some of those big names. Great time to take some profits, okay? Look at some other areas to make some money, and bonds, got to continue to watch that. Should have added precious metals. Thanks for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.